What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Reed Patridge and I'm the owner of War Turbo. This is a brand new series of videos I'm going to do, 5 Minutes with Reed. And in this series, we're going to answer a lot of questions. We're going to give you some tech tips and uh, we're just going to do things turbo. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about ignition timing. And ignition timing specifically in reference to exhaust back pressure or drive pressure in your turbo system. I've had a few calls on this, so definitely video worthy, so let's do this. I had a customer a few weeks ago, got his turbos that we spec for him, put on his car, went to the dyno, made good power, um, but he was a little concerned with the exhaust drive pressure or back pressure numbers that he was seeing. So I said, okay, well, let's do a couple of things. So first thing we did was we did a check of everything on the car mechanically. So we confirmed that uh, ignition timing was, uh, was set properly, cam phasing for the injectors was, was proper. Uh, all of the hardware side of things was doing what it needed to do because you can't fix a bad base with punching numbers on a keyboard, it just doesn't happen. Went back to the dyno, similar atmospheric conditions, same fuel, um, no, no real changes. We, uh, we just, we showed up at the dyno a couple of days later and, uh, and started making pulls. First thing I did was I had him knock five pounds of boost out of the engine. So, uh, we knocked five pounds out of the program, made a baseline hit. We made decent power, but we saw the same trend of possibly higher drive pressure. Um, but this time we also had EGTs. We looked at EGT numbers and that data, while not concerning, was definitely higher than I kind of thought it should be for the power level we were making in the tune that it was on. First thing we did, pull up the timing table. Above peak VE, we added one degree of timing to this engine. So we've already knocked five pounds of boost out, put one degree of timing in. Everything's going to be safe. This car is tuned on C16, so well within our threshold for uh, for fuel and ignition timing and, and boost power and all that good stuff. So made another hit. What we found was the drive pressure went down. The EGTs went down, air-fuel ratio kind of bobbled around in the same spot, maybe marginally richer. Um, at that point, we put another degree of timing in the engine, made another hit. Same trend followed. Lower EGT, lower drive pressure, air-fuel ratio, maybe marginally a little bit richer. We looked at his O2 sensor correction table. Uh, it was maxed out. He had it set at like 10% max pull. So it was pulling 10% and still a little bit rich. So we went ahead and jumped in the fuel flow table, knocked some fuel out of it, put another degree of timing. So we're at three degrees of timing at this point, higher in the engine than he had at the, at the previous uh, dyno session. Made another hit with it. At that point, we started to see our trend come around. EGTs were considerably lower, drive pressure considerably lower, air-fuel ratio was definitely richer than our first baseline pull at 15, uh, 15 PSI. So at that point, the O2 sensor was still pulling fuel, um, or the O2 uh, program. So we went back into the fuel flow table, knocked some more fuel out of it, put some more timing in the motor. So at this stage, I'm feeling comfortable we can start adding some boost too. But we made a hit on just more timing at this point, so we're roughly five degrees more in than where he was at. Uh, everything started to look on par for what we were seeing for boost pressure. Horsepower was nice. Drive pressure was very acceptable. EGTs looked good. Air fuel looked great. At that point, I put a pound of boost into the motor. I didn't put five pounds of boost back in it. I put one. And the reason why I wanted to put one is we need to make some baby steps here because now you have ignition timing in the motor. Not that anything bad is going to happen because it's what it wants, but you also can make a lot of power really quickly with boost. So I was expecting to see between, on this car, between 60 to 70 horsepower per pound of boost. Well, we picked up about 58 or 59, if I remember correctly. So uh, right there on it. Everything looked good, made another pound of boost increase. So now we're at roughly 17, 17 and a half pounds of boost and five degrees more timing in this engine. Um, power number came up drastically. I mean, we picked up at this point, started getting the turbos in their happy spot. We picked up almost 70 horsepower on that pull. I said, okay, let's, let's stop right there, put a fresh set of plugs in the car. Let's do a timing pull on that tune, see where we're at. EGTs look good, drive pressure look good, boost look good, air fuel ratio look good, pull the plugs, 
showed it maybe wanted a little bit more timing. I said, okay, well we can do a little bit of timing or we can do a little bit of boost. So we decided to do a little bit of boost on it. So we put one more pound of boost into it. At that point, the power still came up, but the EGTs went up, the drive pressure went up, higher amounts than they did on the previous add timing, add boost. So we got to a point five, five degrees of timing and some boost back in it, and then we started seeing the trend happening again. So I added half a degree of timing, left the boost where it was. We picked up almost 70 horsepower, um, and EGT, drive pressure, all that stayed the same. It was super happy at that point. So at that stage, we started playing with half a degree of timing, one pound of boost. We also did some plug readings in the middle of this. About every degree and a half of timing we added, I, I read the plugs. What we found out when we left there is this engine wanted almost nine degrees more timing and we were able to make close to 30 PSI of boost and still had less than a 1.75 to one boost to back pressure ratio. So every combo is gonna be different, but if you're having drive pressure issues or you think you are, one of the things I'm gonna get you to look at is always gonna be ignition timing at wide open throttle. Take that very, very seriously because a lot of times conservative is not always safe, nor is it always gonna make power. Guys, I hope you found this tech tip a little bit useful. As everybody says, please like and subscribe so we can continue to grow this channel. And if there's something specific you want me to cover, please drop it in the comments below. I certainly appreciate y'all guys watching. I got more of these videos coming. Y'all stay tuned. Have a good day.